Most guys I talk to usually tell me they want to try to get to X, X body weight, which I think is a mistake. I think you want to try to find a certain body fat percentage and try to shoot for that because body weight really becomes a relative because you know you can you can just eat nothing and starve yourself and lose 50 pounds and just look like shit and feel like shit, not have any energy and just just be awful. You don't want to be awful. You're trying to do this so you can be awesome. Get the fuck up. Simon says, get the fuck up. Throw your hands in the sky. The question is, big guy is trying to lose a lot of fat. All right. When I hear that, I'm thinking big guys, 370 pounds, 350 pounds. I'm thinking what I would consider a big guy, you know, and, you know, somebody who's still got muscle on them, like a super heavyweight power lifter. So the question was more in regards to what would I recommend training and nutrition wise for big guys that want to lose a lot of fat. Um, man, I, I deal with this actually a, a lot and it's probably because I keep, you know, I keep going from a big guy to like a skinny dude and then back up to a big guy again. So I got, <laughs> I got a lot of self experience in how to do it. I don't have a whole lot of fucking experience in how to keep it low, but at the same point, you know, I, <laughs> I don't want to sound like that cartoon character, but I'm big boned, you know, um, I do keep my body fat within, within reason, you know, at all times. So I, I do think I can answer this to a certain degree based upon what I've seen with, with big guys being, you know, well over 300 pounds or in the 300 pound range and speaking from, I always like to use indicators. You know, I need something to work toward. And if you are really big, then skin fold measurement may not be the best indicator for you because anybody that's worked as a trainer or, you know, worked doing skin fold measurements, and if you get somebody that's gonna start testing over 25%, it's just, it, it's, it's really, really, you, you can't get the, the fat to pull away. I mean, it's really, really hard to gauge, you know, what it is, but I would still, if you can, and you can be able to get a good skin fold reading to use, you know, a seven or I think Perlo's got a 10 site skin fold. I usually go with a 10, 10 site skin fold measurement. And it's not the most accurate by, by no means, but if you always have the same person do it and it's always in the same places and they always do it the same way, who cares what the numbers are? Who cares how accurate it is? What you're looking for, are you heading in the right direction? are things going down? That is gonna play a role just as much as the scale does. I think it plays a more important role because the scale can play tricks on you, especially when you're a bigger guy and you're dealing with hydration. Just one day of not hydrating properly and you're gonna be six, seven pounds lighter, and then the next day you hydrate, you're like, oh shit, I gained 10 pounds, and it's, that's not necessarily the case. I've always, with, with that in mind, I've always made the statement that if you can't get down to 14 to 15%, just by making healthier food choices half of the time, drinking more water and lowering your rest periods between sets and training, assuming you're training four days a week, then you got greater issues than, than anybody. It, it's, it's it's that simple you know so just start with that you know don't make it too complicated because if you're a big guy and you have say 100 pounds to lose and you're only gonna lose two to three pounds a week maybe the first week you're gonna blast off 10 14 everybody's a little bit different you got a long haul you don't want to think about how long of a haul that is you don't you just take it week to week but you are going to have to use to get down, if you want to try to get to 10% or to get to under 10%, I don't know what the end goal is. Most guys I talk to usually tell me they want to try to get to X, X body weight, which I think is a mistake. I think you want to try to find a certain body fat percentage and try to shoot for that because body weight really becomes a relative because you know you can, you can just eat nothing and starve yourself and lose 50 pounds and just look like shit and feel like shit, not have any energy and just, just be awful. You don't want to be awful. You're trying to do this so you can be awesome. So 
it's going to take some time. Um, <clears throat> if you have to, and I, I've known people that are 350 pounds and they're lifters and they want to, they want to get down to say they tell me 260 or whatever it's going to be. So they don't, they don't check their body fat and at 380 it's, or whatever, it's going to be really hard to check your body fat unless you use a bod pot or, you know, underwater weighing or something like that, which most won't do. Um, they'll start out, man, they're, they're going to start by doing cardio every day. They're going to start by, you know, doubling the volume of their weight training. They're going to start by dropping the carbs to like zero, but they're going to take every trick in the book and they're going to throw it out there from the very beginning. And then when they get stuck, all they can do is reduce the calories and you don't want to do that. So the advice that I would have for them is before they start trying to lose weight, see how much food they can actually eat every day without gaining weight. So a lot of people will have you do a food journal and just say track what you eat for five days. I don't like to do that. What I like to do is to say, here's what I want you to do. I want you to try to eat a lot, you know, try to eat as much as you can, you know, and watch the scale and just keep eating until you start to see your weight go up. And then when your weight goes up, then try to maintain that same level of what you're eating and then figure out what that is. Because for a lot of people who start a diet that have never dieted before, their, their caloric intake fluctuates greatly, especially for bigger guys. I mean, a bigger guy may have 7,000 calories one day and 2,000 the next day. Or they may have 2,000 for a whole week because it's a busy work week or 3,000 for a day for a whole week. And so it's not really accurate. And you want to start your diet with the maximum amount of calories that you can have, that you can start with. You don't want to start with a minimum that you can start with. So if your body can toler tolerate taking in 6,500 calories per day without gaining weight, then start at 6,500 calories per day by gaining weight and then start taking the calories off from there. And from that point, say 500 per day, you pull off, then you weigh yourself, you know, the same time in the morning, you know, every week, you know, and don't weigh yourself. It's not like gaining weight where you weigh yourself in the morning and night and every time in between. When you're losing weight, just pick one constant time, one day, every single week, and weigh at that time, every single time. And then attract it from there. If you just make healthy food choices, half of the time, you know, so say you're eating uh, drive-through junk food, three meals a day, and then snacking and shit at home. If just two of those junk food meals, you replace it with the chicken breast or, you know, a healthier choice than the Big Mac or the Baconator or whatever it is, and you replace that, then you replace the soda with the water and the fries with apples or, I mean, whatever, half the time. And then increase your water intake, lower the rest intervals with your training, you know, so you're moving a little bit more, getting your training done a little bit faster. You're going to lose weight. The, 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 if you're doing that, the key thing is to not lose too much too fast. But see, that's so simple, most people don't do it. They want all this complicated bullshit, which you don't need. Once you get down into that 14% range, 15% range, being a bigger guy, at that point is when I would tell you, now's when you probably wanna look into hiring somebody to help you with your diet. That's gonna make you a little bit more accountable because this is the time when, you know, people, depending on their strategy, are gonna start dialing in the macros a little bit different. You know, it's, everybody's got different strategies on how they, how they do their things, but the most important thing is it's gonna to start to get a little bit harder at that point in time. You're gonna hit what I call the fugly phase, where between anybody that's dieted down that's been really heavy, you know, in clothes you look really good when you're, 370 pounds, 360 pounds, like, that's a big motherfucker. You lose 50 pounds and you look in the mirror and you look like shit, man. You, look, you go through this nasty ass phase where everything just looks flat. You know, all your muscles look flat and then all your fat looks super, super full and bloated and gross and disgusting. And you, you, 
having some accountability working through that phase, which for me is falls somewhere between 14% and 11% helps a lot because it sucks because you think you're going backwards. You look like shit. Um, you feel better. But once you break through that, that's when you'll start to see, you know, the progress and you'll actually begin to look bigger than when you really started. So the advice is don't overcomplicate things at the very beginning and be very, very consistent on the, the simple things that I just noted. Because you can be consistent, you can do it for two days and then fuck it up for five and it's not gonna matter. But if you're consistent with those very simple things for a period of time, you'll be really surprised at how well that's gonna work. You know, the best specific thing for a beginner or a novice to do is just something like Dave, you got like six weeks of glycogen in your system right now. You know that, so I kind of knew it was going to be a long.